Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, this morning we commemorate the blessedness of saints like Peter and Paul, James and John, Mary and Mary Magdalene, saints like Stephen and all of the other martyrs who were put to death for their confession of Christ, saints like Augustine and Athanasius and Luther and Chemnitz, but also saints like our precious members here who have passed through this great tribulation. They have passed through this veil of tears that we still suffer in, remembering as well as we remember them that each one of you are saints right along with them. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we remember before you those who rejoice upon another shore and in a greater light. That multitude which no one can number whose hope was in the word made flesh. Might we too be counted among the communion of saints through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You know, part of the genius of the church calendar is placing Reformation Day and All Saints Day back to back. Now, in most churches, like ours, we observe them on the Sundays. But obviously, as you know, on the 31st was Reformation Day. And then, of course, on November 1st, the very next day, is All Saints. We figure we can't get you to come out to church two or three times a week, so we do it on Sunday and Sunday alone. But that will change. Reformation, as you know, is red, which many of you wore last week. I was quite uh, surprised to see that. I really was. Red is the color of martyrs, the color of blood, the color of fiery Pentecost. It is, as we call it, the church militant at war against Satan and all of the false doctrine that he spews and, of course, suffering its many crosses. If you were here last week, you heard that the kingdom of God, or the kingdom of heaven, they're synonymous, the kingdom suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. And boy, it does. A wicked and lost world does not want to hear the gospel. Even though it's all for them, they don't want to hear it. I don't want to be told that they're sinners in need of a Savior. They say what? I did it my way. They don't want to hear anything about the gospel or about the church or about Jesus. Thus, as I said even in Bible class this morning, it's a lonely way being in the church militant. Seemingly death reigns. Sin torments, and Satan appears victorious. The church militant is rarely successful in this life as the world measures success. And neither are its members. And for this reason, we have All Saints Day, where the color is white, the color of purity and innocence and holiness. It is the color of the saints victorious. It is not the church militant, it is the church triumphant. Clothed in victory, singing joyous hymns of praise, completely content at now having passed through this great tribulation, this veil of tears. It's the one exception I have with this hymn that we just sang. Did you hear it? It says in stanza three, they meanwhile, speaking of the church triumphant, they meanwhile are in their chambers sleeping. Now folks, I'm all for a good nap. Don't get me wrong. But are you kidding me? Have you read the book of Revelation? It's loud. And the people there are loud. Everything else the hymn says is spot on. Just in their chambers sleeping? More than that, theirs is the kingdom of heaven comforted. They have inherited the earth. They are the ones who have been satisfied. They have received mercy beyond all measure. They see God and are called the sons of God. 
just as we just heard from our Lord in the Sermon on the Mount. For those saints who've gone before us, God has kept his baptismal promise to them, keeping every one of them in the one true faith. Just like the little animals that got on Noah's Ark, he kept them all. He kept them all. Tears have been wiped away from their eyes, and now they see clearly without having to wear these. They see clearly. They now feast at the Lord's table without any sin, without any worry, without any doubt, and without any pain. While we here remain in the struggle, and we fight, and we feebly press on, Trusting not our eyes, but rather trusting our ears. Because faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of Christ. The word of God is what gives shape and meaning and understanding to the reality that we see. Because it's easy to be fooled. And yet, as different as these two days appear, Reformation Day, the color of red, All Saints Day, the color of white, as different as they appear, there are not two different churches. There's not two separate flocks. They are, as we just got through confessing, one holy Christian and apostolic church. One. You see, the saints in heaven and the saints on earth are joined together there in the body of Christ. And you, dear saints, are one with the saints of old. You say, Pastor, there's not a saintly bone in my body. Listen, I've only been here for a couple weeks, but I believe you. <laughs> I get it. Me either. So what makes someone a saint? Is it how they live their lives and helping others? Is it putting up with a certain unbearable someone? Oh, she's a saint, all right, for putting up with him. <laughs> Is it a certain number of miracles that have actually been performed in someone's name? Folks, it's none of those. What makes a saint has nothing to do with the saint. Jesus makes saints. And he does so in the most unextraordinary way. He splashes a little bit of water on their forehead. And he says, in the name, the name, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. He seals them. He marks their forehead with the sign of the cross, making them his forever. Since Jesus alone is holy, he is called a saint. But Jesus is never alone. He refuses to be found without his bride. St. Paul said, the two shall become one flesh. And he said, this mystery is profound. But then he goes on to tell you and reveal to you what the mystery is. This refers what? To Christ and his church. By faith, God reckons us even now to be among the saints. And now His Spirit, through the means of grace, continually renews us in the image of Jesus Christ so that day by day we grow into His image and become more like Jesus in true righteousness, holiness, and blessedness. So a saint, simply put, is just one of Jesus' own. That's it. As one of Jesus' own, we come into this place yet again to sing our hymns, to pray our prayers, to hear the Word of God read and the Word of God preached, and to forgive what we all need, which is the forgiveness of our sins. But as we enter, we are not simply entering into an empty space. I was the first one here this morning. I unlock the door and turn the lights on. There's nobody here. And you say, well, you're right, Pastor. We're all here right now. Oh, it's more than just us, beloved. It's not just the church militant who are gathered here. It is the church militant 
as well as the church triumphant. Oh sure, we come into an empty space like this and we look around and we might see some lights out up there. We might see a spider web here and there. As we look around, we might hear a, a pew that might creak when we sit in it. We see church furniture that hasn't changed in years. But Jesus tells us how things really are. Faith cometh by hearing. And what's he say? He says there's more than us. Actually, we enter into a liturgy, a liturgy that is taking place in heaven, and we join in that liturgy for just a moment. It's already taking place. This is why chambers sleeping? No, how about heavenly divine service that is happening? And I know, some of you youngsters go, oh my gosh, a church service lasts in that long. <laughs> no, it's with God and the Lamb and all the angelic host. You can't get enough of it. We enter into that. I trust you realize this. At every divine service, the Lord Jesus brings heaven to earth. The mighty angels and all the host of heaven to a bunch of clumsy humans like us, making us one with them as we gather around the altar. For as I've said before, whether it be in sermon or in Bible class, as this rail goes around this side of the altar, this is the church militant. It's us. But on the other side of the altar, the rail extends in the same pattern. And who gathers around that? The church triumphant. All those saints who are in glory, they're there. You say, Pastor, come on, please. I've been back there in that room. I know what's back there. <laughs> what does Jesus say? We must let Him define reality for us. Faith cometh by hearing, not by sight. They're there. We join with them for just a few moments. So on All Saints Day, a day that could be filled with sorrow because we no longer see those whom we love, those whom we knew well, we rejoice because we realize that they are not gone forever. Not at all. You see, because if, the, if Christ is here, which He is, then heaven is here. And if heaven is here, which it is, and all the saints are here too. And all is well. All is well. Speaking of Jesus telling us how things really are, a reading from Revelation, it actually is a vision of heaven. St. John was given to peer into this heavenly reality, called there to listen, to see, to even ask questions, and to write it down. And get this, St. John saw you there. That'll really bake your noodle, won't it? Saint John saw you there should you die before Christ comes again in glory. He saw you. And again, you weren't sleeping in a chamber. No, you... You're waving a palm branch. You're dressed in white robes. You're singing the praises of our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. For you were among those coming out of the Great Tribulation. The Great Tribulation is not some period off in the future that lasts seven years. The Great Tribulation is what we go through every single day and have our entire lives. These folks have come out of the Great Tribulation, having washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. That's you. you. For you make up this great multitude that no one can number. From every nook and cranny on the earth. You see, because what happens at the altar now will be fulfilled for this gathering of all of the saints to be around Jesus. This is His church. And you are here because you are in Christ, all because of what He has done for you. So in conclusion, I say to you, dear saints of God, though you weep now in mourning, you will be comforted. 
And though you struggle now to keep the faith, yours is the kingdom of heaven. And though you humbly make your way, often overlook, you will inherit not just this earth, you inherit a new earth. Though you long for what is right, both in the world and in the days to come, or in your own desires, I should say, you will be satisfied. And though you are persecuted, and maybe even worse in the future, yours is the kingdom. And he has given it all to his saints. To you. So bless it all saints day, everyone. In the holy name of Jesus. Amen. We stand together. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.